lads and welcome back to another video and this one is going to be regarding transfers. Everyone's favourite topic. It is now coming round to the thing where teams really are starting to build up momentum and trying to make sign-ins and off the back of my transfer list video that I made about two weeks ago now, I've been quite successful in predicting my own team's transfers when you compare it to the list and compare it to what we've actually gone on to sign. However, this video is not going to be solely Dunfermline Athletic based, it is going to be very much looking at the full SPFL in every individual league and looking at what sign-ins teams have made and who has performed the best pretty much within every division so far. And obviously this will kind of bring it into a minority within each league because not every team has made a sign-in, especially in leagues like the Championship and in some cases League One as well. So. There is going to be a bit of a difference in this video, it's not going to be covering every single team and what they need etc etc. It's just going to be basically going through the teams who have made some sign-ins and the ones that I think have performed the best in terms of the quality of players they've brought in. So, without further ado, let's get into this one. As I said, basically rating the best performers of the transfer window so far. So, obviously, we start off in the Scottish Premiership the top division. There's obviously been a few more there than there has been in other divisions because they've got more resources, more money and of course their start of the season is coming up quicker than the rest of the divisions in Scotland so they've got every right to be making signings quicker of course. But I would have to say the best performers of the Scottish Premiership transfer window so far are Motherwell FC. They brought back players such as Chris Long on a one year deal after his deal was due to run out or something like that and obviously they've renewed the deal to make it a one year deal going on in next summer. They brought back Jake Hasty as well on loan from Rangers which caused a controversy between their fan base but I think he'll win the fans around eventually because he is probably still a top quality player and will go on to improve Motherwell as time goes on and obviously Stephen Robinson being a top manager himself he will know that Jake Hasty can come in and improve their first team. They brought back Mark O'Hara from Peterborough I believe he turned down a deal at Peterborough and obviously has now made the permanent switch back to Motherwell. It says a lot for a club like Motherwell that players are willing to kind of drop from that level where they may be getting better wages I'm not entirely sure but it says a lot that they're willing to come back and fight for a place in the Scottish Premiership now it's really building up the reputation of our game and obviously teams like Motherwell are just gaining that reputation that players respect playing for a club like that and it should always have been the case but it obviously wasn't in terms of playing an English game and playing the Scottish game. English players tended to look at it as a bit of a step down but I think the Scottish game is gaining a bit of a reputation now and players are really taking it seriously. They also managed to secure the signings of Jordan White from Inverness, big tall striker, exactly what Muller will need every single season it seems. They always seem to have a taller striker on board and they also signed Ricky Lamy from Livingston which is a very smart addition especially since he was involved within the sort of defensive roles at Livingston of course and you've seen examples of Declan Gallagher making the same move from Livingston to Mullerwell and doing very well. And on the side of that they also managed to keep Stephen Robinson as their manager after interest coming from I think it was the Northern Ireland job so that was an impressive feat as well because he is an important cog in that Mullerwell project that's going on right now. Their only downfall of the transfer window though has to be signing Scott Fox. Don't know how this one happened, really flummoxed as to how he's got the move into the third best team at the moment pretty much in Scotland. Baffles me. Ah oh well. Football can be a funny game at times. Special mentions have to go to Hibernian, obviously. Just in the last few days secured the signings of Kevin Nisbet for Dunfermline. Cheers for the money lads. Dre Wright, winger good service provider for the strikers like Nisbet who they've just brought in and obviously Christian Deutsch etc etc and Alex Gogic in the middle of the park big hard <laughs> he will do the job for Hibs no doubt he was a fantastic player for Hamilton playing that role that he's perfect at playing a brilliant set of three just like your mates over at Dunfermline here Livingston also made a decent signing and Robbie McCrory coming back on loan from Rangers, a vital cog in their second half of the season after he was on loan at Queen of the South and basically did enough to win their player of the year, so a good signing there. And Ross County as well, bringing in Stephen Kelly. Good signing, but 
I will refer back to the Tap Bag podcast that I was delighted to be featured on and their thoughts on the move. But that it was nice of Ross County to cut the umbilical cord to sign Stephen Kelly. Let him in. I've never seen anyone look so young. <laughs> I could not believe that because I, we praised him a lot last season. He had a really good season air, didn't he? But I'd never yeah. seen his face. I just never, I had no idea what he looked like for some reason. And I seen that and I was absolutely flabbergasted. I actually, I had to compose myself, man. It creeped me out. That was a good podcast to be on, by the way. So if you've missed out on that, go over to Spotify and give that a listen. Cheers, lads. And now down into the Championship. Now, we've spoken about the Championship signings quite a lot, considering that there's pretty much only two teams that have actually made signings in the Championship. One being Dunfermline, of course, and we've obviously secured the captures of Paul Watson, Stephen Whitaker, Declan McManus, Kevin O'Hara and Dom Thomas. Five signings. Five. We're one of the only teams in Scotland to have made that many signings, and especially at Championship level, as I said. For us to have made those captures, brilliant, obviously. Helping with the fact that we sold Kevin Nisbet as well. Ricking in the money. Special mention though to the one other club that seems to have made a signing unless I've missed out on something. Hearts signing Craig Gordon. Good signing for this level. I'm assuming they're going to be a championship team this coming season. And Craig Gordon in between the sticks is a very good start for that. So now from one league that's had a lot of transfer business in the Premiership to one that's had a wee bit less. To one that's had basically none. Scottish League 1. That ringed. A league that's had none. Scottish League 1. Rabbi Burns. A shout out to Airdrie here, where they've brought in the signing of Thomas Robert. I believe that must be how he pronounces his name, because he is a foreign player. It's not going to be Thomas Robert, put it that way. Has made the move from Montpellier in France. Turned down a deal there, and apparently had interest from Scottish Premiership teams, such as Rangers, Celtic, etc., and teams down in England, I think in the Premiership as well, but decided to sign for Airdrie. Now, that's a bit of a strange one, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I don't know what to make of this one. It could be one of those ones that is simply going to be absolutely <laughs> and doesn't perform to the level that he even expects himself to. But, I don't know. We'll see how this one pans out. It's a bit of a strange one overall. Don't understand the move. But, hey-ho. But the extreme shout out in League One goes to Darville FC, who seem to have signed pretty much a player from almost every team that was in last season's League One. So on the 30th of April, they signed Jordan Kirkpatrick, a very good sign in there for whatever level Darville are at. I can't even think what level they're at right now. Also on the 30th of April, they signed Ryan Thompson from Stranraer, another good sign in. Was he at Stranraer last? Wherever he was, Faye. It's a decent sign in. Then they signed a player from the League One team of the season in Jordan Allen. This one was from Stranraer. The left back, 25 years old, ambition. That is what this club is going through right now. And the one that caught everyone's eye was Ian McShane signing from Falkirk. Got released for there, I believe. And he's went down to Darville. This is very strange. This is a very strange turn of events. I'd not even heard of Darville, if I'm being quite honest, before they made all these signings. So they really have showed that ambition to become a club that is in the public eye. They've gotten my attention, put it that way. They've even claimed in a paper recently that the pie's the limit and ambitious Darville target is a spot in the championship within the next decade. Now, come back to me when I'm 30 years old and ask me if Darville are in the Championship or have been in recent times at that point. I don't know. They're certainly making ambitious signings right now. But we've seen examples like this before, so I'll hold the bus on getting all excited about this development. And finally, Scottish League 2. There has been two clubs that have made pretty decent signings in this one that I really rate. And one being Queen's Park, who have made the signing of... David Galt coming back to the club, who is a stalwart at their club, and they call him the King, etc. So it's a very appreciative move for their fans, of course. They signed Ross McLean to a new contract, who is yet another one of Ray McKinnon's sons, I suppose. But they also made the signing of Bob McHugh, which was a very impressive one in my opinion. One of the Championship's top scorers last season. And they've done well to capture his services, of course, Ray McKinnon's experience and reputation. But... With Bob McHugh has obviously gotten that move for him, especially with Queen's Park going full time as well. Queen's Park did release a little time lapse thing where you could click on the screen, it was a GIF, and you could click how many goals Bob McHugh would get. So let's try that now and see what happens. 
Oh, one goal. <laughs> Hopefully for his sake that's not the case. Let's try again. 30 goals. Well, maybe that's, maybe not as realistic, but <laughs> he'll take it. But I also have to credit Still and Albion for their signings. They've signed Kieran Moore from Queen's Park FC. Declan Byrne from Albion Rovers has scored 11 league goals last season, so that could be an important cog to go alongside a signing from Dunfermline Athletic, Andy Ryan, after his release from our club. I was impressed with this signing, and I was even more impressed to see that Kevin Rutkovic said that last summer he was actually looking to get Andy Ryan in the door then. So credit to Still and Albion for keeping relentless in that pursuit of signing Andy Ryan and they've got their man. I think he'll score a decent amount of goals, probably in line with Bob McHugh. Whether or not that's the 30 goals or the one goal, maybe somewhere in between for the both of them. But aye, that's it for this video guys, cheers for watching. That was the best performers of every single league within the transfer market so far. I may do a follow up on this, I may not, who knows. But if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. Comment down below your thoughts on signings that have been made in the SPFL so far and who has performed the best in each league. And subscribe for more of this type of content. And until the next video, I'll see you then. Cheers, guys.